Hi there, this is Carl Irwin with a quick update on some software issues we've been looking at lately. I recently reviewed uh, Muse Score 4, the initial release of that, uh, which we're still in that state. There hasn't been any updates in the last few days uh, with that new release, uh, with the release of the new Play Engine and the new uh, sampled sound set that they have, which is really the kind of the big update uh, that everybody is talking about. Uh, there's some other updates to the interface, uh, to the mixer, and uh, also some uh, kind of small detailed updates to the engraving, which is really what the program is all about. Uh, since then, I've had a chance to play around a little bit more with it, and I can address some of the things that I discussed in my initial review uh, and uh, clarify a few things and update you on a few uh, elements that I've discovered and, and uh, worked out. And then also just for the people that follow me on the channel, not too many, small little following here, just on where I'm at in the state of Linux software uh, given this release and what it does to uh, the workflow that I've been using uh, up to this point and how that has changed a little bit and a lot of it in some ways. Uh, so first of all, I want to address Muse Score 4 and the Muse Hub. So um, as I talked about in the review, the Muse Hub did not work consistently for Linux, at least on this system. And I have some other Linux systems where I'd been using the Muse Score Hub or the Muse Hub, and it was working fine. Uh, but on this system, I had issues with the backend service. So what I did find out from uh, comments on YouTube and some discussions there is that uh, sometimes the Muse Hub service, the backend, does not work unless it is uh, engaged root. So what I did is I created a launcher, and I have this launcher here, and I'll show you the launcher. You can see this is the launcher, and uh, the command is sudo muse hub service. And uh, I created this launcher so that whenever I activate it, I enter my password for my computer, my login credential for this uh, system, and then it will start the backend muse service, and then I can start muse hub uh, from kind of user level. Uh, and it will then run. So I can just show you that real quickly. If we go down here to my launcher for the Muse Hub service, it's a pain in the neck, but I do have to do this. And now it will run. And uh, once it uh, gets running and it asks for the client, I can now uh, run the client and it will open up and show everything that I would I would need. So it'll show me the instruments that we have, uh, and it should also show that I've downloaded all of the instruments uh, up to this point. So uh, you can see here the check mark indicates that I have indeed downloaded uh, those sound sets, and I already have them on my system. So a uh, little slow loading here. I'm not in the, the best internet location right now uh, running from uh, the in-laws place. I'm on vacation, Christmas vacation with a family, and they have a, a DSL uh, kind of out in the country, so it's a little slow. Uh, but you can see everything's there. Everything works now. This is kind of a pain in the neck. It shouldn't have to be this way, in my opinion. This uh, Muse Hub really should not be require this kind of root configuration for any system. It ought to just be able to run. But as of right now, that seems to be a little bit of a flaw here on some systems. So uh, that is something I figured out, and I can consistently get that. Uh, I want to show you kind of a real-world application here for Muse Score 4 that I've been dealing with and uh, what it's done for me. Um, this is a, a real uh, project I'm working on, and this is the playback file for the project. So it's not the actual project itself, but the playback file so that I can get a rendered uh, uh, proof of concept for people to see. And I'll just kind of shrink this down here and show you. This is for a concert band. This is a junior high level concert band piece. It's just three part writing. There's a part one, a part two, and then a part three. And that would be kind of a soprano, a mid alto uh, part, and then sort of a bass part. Uh, and then this is divided among the instrumentation in the concert band. And this is to serve as an audition kind of a solo etude audition for instrumentalists in the junior high grade levels. And this is for a county association proposal that we're doing to replace, uh, I'm in New York State, we're going to replace our NISMA solo festival uh, with this, uh, where students would otherwise be playing solo etudes that we've predetermined. Um, and some of them are not very equitable. Some of them are very, very difficult. Some of them are a little bit easier. 
uh, and it kind of has a psychological effect on students. So this is an this is a negative psychological effect on students. So this is a way uh, that we got from another nearby county association to kind of get everybody on the same playing field. And also because it will be a concert band sort of arrangement, they would be able to rehearse this together uh, just occasionally uh, so that they can get kind of an understanding of their solo etude and then they can practice this on their own, their individual parts, and then go audition. Just a 32 measure piece uh, for that junior high level and it just has kind of a, I guess you would call it sort of a grade level three for New York State system, which is uh, uh, one through six uh, sort of uh, capability. This is uh, right now the playback file, so I have multiple instances of instruments just so I can get kind of a section sound. And uh, here's my mixing setup. What I needed to do was get a render of this so that I could get that out to some people that I have evaluating it as we're dialing it in for the to be proposed to the association uh, to vote it in. And uh, it, I thought it'd be good to have a, a an audio file. So I had been using Q-Tractor, which is the uh, sequencer that I had been using for everything, uh, film score and other projects. And I'd been using uh, Virtual Playing Orchestra, Versilian uh, Community Orchestra, some other kinds of SFZ files, uh, uh, sound sample sets, and mocking the, uh, up these these arrangements. So I had made a mock-up originally of the first draft of this, and it took me several hours to do the mock-up itself because I had to enter a lot of MIDI data to get things to play back. And I had written the initial thing on uh, MuseScore uh, 3.6. In the middle of all this, MuseScore 4 came out, and I got to another edition after a few alterations, and then I played it back on this program, and it sounded like the hours of work that I had done on the mock-up. And I thought, well, shoot, that changes everything, right? I don't, I don't need to spend hours on a mock-up. I can just do the work here, maybe make a few adjustments and notation on a playback file and render it out. So that's what I did. And this is, this is what we have. So if I play back, you can kind of just get a, a sense for what this concert band kind of feel sounds like uh, on this uh, uh, short little uh, etude piece for junior high uh, instrumentalists. So that's just proof of concept for the arrangement uh, from this playback file. It's got, again, some adjustments to it so that it will play back the way I want it to. Uh, I have another version of this file, which is the actual engraving uh, that we'll be looking at uh, to decide if we want to use it. But um, you can hear that a couple hiccups in there. I'm running some screen capture software, so it's using up resources. I can just render this out to WAV file, though, and there's it's, it's a very, very clean take with really no work. I mean, this, we're talking about minutes of work versus hours of sequencer work. Uh, and that just changes everything. So uh, this is a real-world application of the benefits of MuseScore 4 that I'm using right now uh, in my kind of real work. Um, very sterile sort of piece. This isn't really meant to be played uh, as a concert experience. It's just an etude piece, uh, just a kind of, a, a, again, a sterile 
application of music that has uh, the various kinds of attributes that we want to test students on to audition them for uh, our county association ensembles. So anyway, that's that. Now, what I've discovered now because of this ability in MuseScore 4 and the sound sampled sets that they have, the ability to get kind of orchestral sounds uh, rendered out, is I've changed my workflow significantly. What this caused me to do... Um, and I have to back up a little bit because as I was trying to figure out this Muse Hub thing, I ended up wiping my system several times. I backed up all my information. I wiped the system and I tried several distributions to see if I could get that hub to work. And I never could get it. And in the end, I ended up coming back to uh, Ubuntu Studio 20, uh, 22.04, which is the current long-term distribution. I thought I'd better be on the long-term one rather than be on something else. So I did come back kind of home to where I started. Um, but in doing so, I, I kind of uh, removed all of the tweaks that I had made to my system over time. And I got back to a place where really the only thing I had done to the system is added the KX Studio repository. So I have those updates. And I also am running Pipewire. So what I, what I did is I thought, wait a minute, if this is this good, do I really need to use QTractor anymore for what I've been doing? And if, if not... Can I, can I check out our door? Is our door now good enough with the MIDI side of it that I can just switch over? I'd always seen this time coming. I'd, I'd been anticipating this where our door would kind of catch up to uh, Q Tractor stability in MIDI. And lo and behold, I did. Uh, I opened up a session in our door uh, six, which is the Kick Studio build currently free. Um, and of course, open source, you can always build our door. But if you want to get their files, if you want to get their uh, pre-built uh, binaries, you have to pay a subscription. But if you have the KX Studio, they build a, um, a current version. So that's what I'm running. And uh, I got to tell you, it seems to be spot on. So I'm, I, I'm giving up our, uh, a Q tractor. I think I'm done with QTractor. That's probably the last that I will use of QTractor uh, because our door has caught up and it's just a lot simpler. I'm able to do bus mixing much more easily and quickly in our door. There's not a lot of goofy inserts, back end, you know, kind of hoops to jump through to make everything sequence together and, and, and uh, wire together. Uh, and I also get away from Jack. Now I can use our door just on the ALSA platform. I'm really not running Jack for anything anymore. Um, and then I still need to keep uh, MuseScore 3.6 so that I can do the film work because they still don't have a video player on MuseScore 4. Um, I'm very nervous about that. Uh, they say they're looking at, I, I have one person from the development community saying that they're looking at that, but I don't see really any indications that that is a priority, but it, it needs to be. Uh, so I'm still on 3.6 for any film scoring because I need to sync with XJDO uh, to compose, uh, to, to picture from a notation program. Uh, and then of course, our door is using, I think it's an internal version of XJDO is what they've used for their video player. Also uh, syncs with Alsa. So I'm done with Jack, thank goodness. I don't really need to deal with Jack anymore for anything. Uh, and, um, yeah, that's the state of things. So I've got, uh, I've got Audacity, I've got uh, Ardor 6, uh, MuseScore 4, and uh, MuseScore 3.6. So that seems to be what I'm using. And then uh, for my video editing and whatnot, I'm using Blender. So um, that seems to be where we're at. And uh, just to give you a little bit of update, one thing too I want to show you real quick. This is another update to MuseScore 4. Um, I had made some comments about uh, the issues with the sound samples in the mixer that you couldn't really navigate from here to the MS sounds. So right here I have bassoon on my Muse sounds, but if I go to sound fonts and hit MS basic, they didn't really allow me to select the instrument that I wanted. I was looking in the wrong place. I don't know why they don't have this menu in here as well. It seems to me that the sound fonts should have the same menu or a similar kind of tree structure as the Muse sounds. But what you have to do is you go over here to uh, the instrument panel. And if I click on bassoon, once I have MS Basic selected, I can uh, come in here and I should be able to select 
a, a sound from here. So if I go into the uh, bassoon sound, replace instrument, I can come in here and now this is set up for the MS sounds and I can select all instruments or whatever and I can negotiate all of the available instruments. So uh, if I go here to uh, woodwinds and I select um, from here bassoon is, is what I could use. Uh, it allows me to do percussion as well. So if I go to all instruments and I come down to unpitched percussion, I do now have access to everything, and I did find a mark tree. I was looking for metal wind chimes, and uh, another name for that is mark tree, and I was able to find that uh, down here. So if I look around, see if I can find it now. Mark tree. So there's my sound. It is in there, and it's it, did, it didn't go away. So um, And, by the way, it automatically applies whatever MIDI data you had in your score to that sound which is great. You don't have to find the right MIDI note. So this is actually a lot better off than I thought. This is actually pretty well organized. You just have to get to these sounds from a different location from the instrument panel rather than from down here in the um, mixer. So that is uh, the, the difference between them. So let me switch this back. And uh, there we go. So uh, you can get up to all the sounds in the sound font. Uh, just go over to the instrument panel, replace instrument, Follow the uh, dialogue there, and it will give you all of the options that are available from the sound font. You can choose it by name, and it will apply. So anyway, that's it. Just wanted to give you some updates on my workflow, what I'm doing. Uh, you'll be, I would expect to see some Ardor 6 tutorials in the future rather than Q-Tractor. I do still have Q-Tractor uh, tutorials, kind of comprehensive tutorials for it on the channel here, and I won't take those down for those of you that are going to continue on Q-Tractor and still use it. Uh, if I ever find a reason to come back to that, that will come, but I think uh, our door 6 will be the way of the future for me uh, from here on, given this capability MuseScore 4 uh, and the, the ability to get away from Jack. So anyway, that's my update. Good luck with that. Happy mixing.